Alright, I figure today we'll do a quick little Christmas creepy things. It's almost Christmas. Goodness sake, it's called. It's free on Steam, it's supposed to be like 20 minutes, so that's good. So the night is finally here. Everyone else is asleep. But there's no chance of you actually sleeping tonight. In a final attempt to guarantee a spot on the nice list, you decided to try to do some extra chores before midnight. Laundry, do the dishes, put away video games, turn off all the electric candles, take the trash to the garage. Okay. Reading the same store we're supposed to do the chores, we get a decision with each chore, and then we decide if we're on the, you know, nice or naughty list of presents. Everyone wants presents, I mean, what else is the point of Christmas? Done. Door to the basement. There's no way you're going down there at night. Is this an electric candle, I guess? Yes. Okay. One of six. two achievements for the game. I guess good and bad ending, so we'll do both. Shouldn't take long. It's very low effort tree, I feel like. You're not a candle light. Santa? Sucks. You suddenly think about something that happened at school years ago. Brianna was the popular kid in class, with Nancy and Mark always tagging along, reaping the benefits. But one day, Brianna turned everyone in class against Nancy, even Mark turned against her. Mark, you bitch. Eventually, it got bad enough that Brianna started stealing Nancy's stuff. One time, it was her socks and shoes after gym class. Humiliated, Nancy had to walk back to class barefoot. Later, she was pursued by the teacher, who demanded to know where her shoes went. Nancy didn't want to be branded as a snitch because snitches get stitches, possibly making things worse, so she lied. Nancy ended up going missing around Christmas. If Krampus took her, then she must have done something wrong, right? It must have been Nancy lying to her teacher. Why was it wrong?
camera was the first man. I shouldn't have waited for Isaac to get grounded. Then she should have acted immediately. Don't cover up any friends' crimes. Send him to jail. All force hoverboard is something you put on your Xmas list every year. But they're expensive and always hard to find, so you're not holding your breath. For the longest time, the only kid in school that ever managed to get one was Barb, and she let everyone know it was hers. She guarded it fiercely. So when your best friend mentioned that they saw Alex running around with a hoverboard, with Barb nowhere in sight, they thought it was strange. Your best friend later ran into Barb but didn't say anything about it. They confessed to you that they didn't think it was any of their business. Your best friend went missing last year, and for 12 months now, you haven't thought about anything else. Now, this was the incident that put them on the naughty list. What about it was so wrong? Maybe your best friend should have told Barb because it's the right fucking thing to do. Always important to be truthful to others. Barb would have been happier knowing him longer. You think this every time you see your best friend's house through the window. your siblings room. Definitely don't want to wake them up. No, I guess not. Santa? Trash. All the trash. Time to head to the garage. Put away video games. Stay trash there. I too much worse. Where are my video games? That's one thing you kids don't understand today. This is when video games were physical. Now everything's digital. We don't really own anything anymore. At the haunted, the haunted PS1. And the weirdly SNES colored looking thing. It's fine. Oscar loved math, but he also felt a need to somehow justify it by getting in trouble. I mean, you love math, Oscar, you're weird. Nothing serious, but Oscar still got grounded by his strict parents quite a bit. There was that one time you noticed Patty got mad at Oscar for not helping with her, for not helping her with her homework, as promised. He was grounded at the time, no friends, no phone, Patty ultimately flew that class, and Oscar vanished in early December that year. Why was Oscar punished for abandoning his parents? Elevated garages. Key. Get a key hit. Took me a second. Santa. Jingle bells. It's this front door, I guess. It's basement, if I'm not mistaken. Garage where you wash your car. You were bathroom.
Oops, I come from the basement and murder me, I feel it. Empty candy wrapper reminds you of the school fundraiser you did once of Christy. All the kids were going to get a small percentage of the total to boost motivation. So everyone went extra on it. But the extra you earned never showed up and seemed to be forgotten about. You later heard Christy was trusted by the teacher to distribute the extra earnings to your group. And you really only heard about that when Dana told you they suspected Christy. Dana even called Christy out to one of the parents. Christy became shunned, but the money was still never found. Later that year, around this time, Dana went missing. You're guessing this is probably the situation that did it. Maybe Dana should have talked to Christy first because, instead of spreading heresy and possible lies, you should know. Interesting chance to fix the situation to save a bunch of money. I would give Christy an opportunity to explain her side of the story. It's because, I mean, maybe the teacher kept the money. We just have Christy's word versus Dana's word. We don't know anything for her such shit. Making judgments about all the information leads to the ass exactly. Santa's coming for me. It sounds like something's at the front door. I don't know why, as a small child, you would answer the front door in the middle of the night. I, as an adult, don't answer my front door in the middle of the day. I don't care. <laughs> Santa. Yeah, taken. One more time for the good ending. Now this time we hopefully get the good ending. Santa. Good ending. It's all the exact same, just the right choices. So we'll see what. Dollar crap is hell. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals.